So before we do our machine learning piece, I want to go over recruitment and interview recommendations. Remember, this slide will be in there. Um, I want to cover this first because that way I can go as long as I want on machine learning. So recommendations here, I, I've gotten a lot of this because a lot of you guys are expanding your teams. Either you're hiring internally for your company that you may work for the end user, or you're building an integrator, you're expanding your integrator. Here are some recommendations on recruiting your team. Number one, ask them to walk you through the last N years of their life. Okay. You decide what N is. If it's, you know, if they're 23 years old, maybe it's the last five years. If they're in their forties, maybe it's the last 10 years, but ask them to have a conversation with you about the last N years of their life. And if they ask you, well, do you want to know personal? Do, do you want to know professional? What are, you, what are you asking? Repeat the question. Walk me through the last N years of your life. What you want to know is how they perceive that question. Okay. And then you want to hear the stories. Number two, you want to know what their passion is. And if they say, oh, well, I really love dogs or, you know, whatever. No, say, what moves you? What's your passion and what moves you? Okay. So if, let's say that question is asked of me. I want to change the world. Like when I die... In the moment right before I die, I want to look back on my life and say, I had a very positive impact on the world around me. And the things that I did during my life are going to sustain. There are some foundation, the people I came into contact with, those I mentored, the children I raised, those I went to church with, the kids I coached, the people I touched, I left a positive mark. Okay. Yeah. That's if somebody asked me that. What are my values? What are your values? What do you value? If a person says that they don't know what their values are, then you need to not hire them. <laughs> okay. If someone says, well, I don't know what I value and they can't answer that question at all. If they can't answer that question at all for us, then we're not hiring that person, no matter how gifted they are. What's your life's mission? Notice uh, the first four questions. There's nothing in there about technical aptitude. Okay. Then tell me, if I have to give this t credit to Elon Musk here. Because this is a, he doesn't ask the question this way, but he always asks this question. Tell me about a time you snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. So, what you want them to do is go through identifying the problem, their hypothesis, the technical details, and the outcome. This is the most important piece technical details. That means if, if they can give you nuts and bolts, technical details on how they solved a problem. Now, Ian, let's say they're a business development person. There are still technical details of solving business development problems. Like here's how I built the sales funnel for such and such company. I added this tool. We, I added these six steps in our funnel. We identified that we needed to increase total opportunities in our sales funnel from a mean of 66 to a mean of 120 in order to increase sales with, you know, an average purchase order of $60,000 in order to increase those sales to $120,000 per purchase order, which by default would yield this type of return. Those are the technical details of a business development problem that was solved by someone. And those are the only, and the only person who can give you the technical details are the person who solved the problem. Okay. Everybody else would just be able to give you the, the high level. Okay. And last but not least, what do you want to be known for? Okay. This is a, a matrix I use for Python. You know, if I want to ascertain someone's Python skill set, I will ask them to solve a couple of these. I may go, you know, create a function called reverse that is using recursion. Okay. Or check if two strings are anagrams. Write a function to see if two strings are an anagram. Okay. What you want them to do is just be able to walk through the logic of that. They don't have to write it down. They just need, you just need them to walk it through it. Another really good one is if you're testing for SQL ability, you know, you don't ask them to write a, um, you know, a cascaded query or something, or ask them to write a Sprock. What you do is you give them this chart and ask them to explain it to you. Say, explain to me how this diagram on the left equals this diagram on the right for inner join. Okay. You got to make sure that the person who asks the question can also decipher it themselves. So if you're not a technical person, this might not mean anything to you. I, I, there's one piece I haven't talked about, and that's this. So uh, Tanya is our director of human resources. So Tanya's job is before we ever interview someone, it's her job to make sure she's qualified for the subject matter that we're interviewing. Okay. It's her job to make sure they check off the subject matter expertise box. Okay. It's our job to confirm that she picked right. But our job is to select on culture and, and values. 
you know, let me say this. I, I used to say this. Uh, my kids used to say to me, like whenever my kids really screwed up, I would always make them stand at attention when I was talking to them. The only time I ever made them stand at attention was when they really screwed up. And there was a reason I did that was because I wanted them to know the difference between when they really screwed up and when they just made a mistake. Right. And my kids would say to me, dad, when we really, really screw up, why is it you're so hard on us? And I said, because my goal is to be the hardest thing that you've ever had to face. That's my goal. If you can handle the heat when you've really screwed up with me, then you're going to be able to handle the heat in any challenge you face in your entire life. Part of the reason that we talk so much about values in the interview process is we want to know whether or not people can handle the heat. This job is really, really, really hard, but it's worth it. It's stressful is all hell. You're going to miss vac- you're going to miss birthdays. You're going to you know, you have to solve the problem when the problem pops up. You don't get to be like, I'll do that Monday or I'll do it when I get back from vacation or if that isn't how it works. Our clients, whether you're whether you work for the end user like Ben, the people Ben, you know, the people who are counting on you and your plant, they don't give a shit that it's Saturday night at 11 o'clock. <laughs> it's, you know, Ben's got to solve the problem right in this position, whether you work for the end user, the integrator, the OEM. We do the worst projects in the worst conditions at the worst time of the year. And you tell people that, have that in your mindset. We have the worst projects in the worst environments at the worst time of the year. You want to know why? Because if it was any, if it was anything else, they do it themselves. They would do it. They'd fix it themselves, right? You have to know when you're interviewing people that they can handle that. Not only can they handle it, that's where they thrive. That's where they thrive. There are people who literally thrive on the chaos of the impossible problem. And that's the only place they want to be. Just like there are people who thrive on running into buildings that are literally on fire. (laughs) Hey, I want to run into buildings that are on fire. I want to run towards the gunshots. There are people who are literally, that is literally how they thrive. Exactly. That's who you want on your team. You know, the, the worst person you can hire for your team is the person who studied engineering in school because their parents made them. And in fact, they love drawing and they want to be an artist. <laughs> you know, like that's the worst person you could hire, right? Not, not that artists, artists are important, but you want the people who do this because it's in their blood. Their values are all be- based around helping others. And you, and you have to interview to get to the crux of that. Focus a lot less on technical capability, a lot more on personality, culture, and values, and you will thrive. Because if you have the right people on your team, the right people can learn the skills you need. That doesn't mean don't ever hire somebody because of skill set. You know, if you if all things being equal, you got the right attitude, one's got the skill, one doesn't, pick the skill. But don't eliminate someone simply because they don't have the skill yet. I mean, the people who share your values and culture and and uh, commitment and they have the right personality, they're far more rare than the people who have the skills you're looking for. Hey gang, I'm here to announce a workshop that we're doing November 6th and 7th, how to recruit and retain the employee of the future and how to reorganize your business to become a digital organization. One of the biggest problems that manufacturers are suffering with is the ability to recruit and retain the employee of the future. The employee who is enabled to unlock the potential in the business through data. Everybody wants to do data analytics and everybody wants to do predictive analytics and everyone wants to predict the future. They want to predict sales. They want to predict failure. They want to predict opportunity and they don't know where to start. And honestly, where it starts is with a change in mindset. We do all sorts of workshops around mindset. We do all sorts of workshops around the technical elements, architecture and strategy, minimum technical requirements. But what we haven't done up to this point is answer the question we get all the time, which is how do I recruit and retain the employee of the future? And what does my business look like in the future? So if you or someone in your organization needs the answer to those questions, and I assure you they do, please go to iiot.university and take a look at our workshop, which is taking place November 6th and 7th, Wednesday and Thursday. It'll be hosted by yours truly. I'll be doing the presentation that I do to organizations individually, generally, and a presentation that I do when I'm doing a digital transformation maturity assessment and when I'm meeting with the leadership groups. So this will be a groundbreaking workshop, primarily focused on end users. But if you're an integrator or you're a vendor and you want to know how to do this as well, you are welcome to attend. For those of you in Mastermind who are already part of all of the educational offerings we have, 
I'll see you there.